John, congratulations on, on another victory. You know, Thank afterwards, you. You, you, you kind of were apologetic to a degree, right? That you didn't necessarily deliver what you wanted. So in your head, do you feel like this was a, a disappointing performance or a, a subpar performance from you? I, I, it would be disrespectful to Thiago and his great team to say that it was a subpar performance. I, I met a fighter who came game. You know, he's a, he's a black belt in Muay Thai. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, and I fought him where he is comfortable. And uh, as a result, I have sore feet and sore legs. Uh, but I'm very grateful that, uh, that I came out on top. He came in in a wheelchair as well. I'm just curious, as the fight was progressing, how aware were you of his physical condition? And was it just his power that kept you from really, you know, opening up the arsenal and, 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 and really seeking that finish? Yeah, you know, he was, he was extremely powerful. You know, his kicks were powerful, his punches were powerful. And I wanted to play a smart game. Um, it probably been, would have been a lot smarter to get him to the ground and test him there. Uh, but I felt like I was winning at what he was absolute best at, you know. Um, I feel like his team had him optimally prepared. His cardio was great. Um, his punches and kicks were great. And I felt like I, that was his best, you know, that was his best. And I, and I found a way to win on the feet at what he's absolute best at. And so uh, in a rematch, uh, if that were to happen, obviously I need to make some adjustments and, and make smarter choices. Look for uh, maybe attack him where he's a little weaker. But I am proud because his kickboxing and his stand up is what he's known for. I faced it head on 25 minutes and, uh, and I found a way to come out on top, so. Did you know he was hurt? Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I felt like in the first round he kicked me, and I checked a kick, and I felt like uh, maybe he hurt his foot. But I haven't seen any injury reports. What is his injury? I think his knee, he said. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know his knee was hurt at all. I figured he maybe hurt his foot. I remember in the first round he threw a, uh, a right leg kick, and I checked outside, and I thought it was his foot that was hurt. But it's good to know it was, it was his knee. So you get to the decision, you line up, they start reading a split result, they read a score for him. What's going through your mind at that point? Uh, I was like, please, not like this, you know? I, I, uh, I was confident that I won the fight. My coaches wouldn't lie to me. They said, John, we feel like you won every round. Um, so I was just extremely grateful. Honestly, to, to have a fight like that is extremely humbling. It, you know, it, it drives me to study more, you know, work harder and uh, take the game even more seriously. That, that was a good, uh, it was a good warning for me tonight. And last thing for me, John, uh, what is your physical condition? We haven't seen an injury report on you. You just said sore feet, but what's the status and, and what does it mean for your return? This busy stretch that you're on gives the idea of what's next. Uh, right now, my feet are hurt. Uh, both shins are, are swollen, but nothing's injured. It, things just hurt. And, and that's what you get when you, when you stand with a Muay Thai black belt. You're gonna do a lot of shin and feet colliding. And, uh, and it's a small price to pay for this, uh, for this great victory. John, I know before uh, coming out here, we, we had talked and you were talking about how powerful he was. Did he exceed your expectations? Yeah, he did. Honestly, I would have to say he's, he's the most powerful guy I've ever fought. Uh, you know, I blocked almost all of his face punches. I think maybe two of them actually landed on me. And, uh, and boy, he knocked my mouthpiece out. Uh, even when I was blocking, you know, it was making me, my defense rock side to side. Very powerful. You know, I, I, I think Tiago represented his team, his country so well. I'm, I, I wish nothing but the best uh, for Tiago. I think when he gets back to Brazil, um, people need to give him a parade or do something really special for him. He should be very, very proud of himself. Uh, he handled it, uh, he handled defeat like a man. You know, he came up, gave me a big old hug and it's just like, man, sorry for some of the negative things I said about you before the fight. And that was something I wasn't expecting. And uh, he was like, man, when you ever come down to Rio, I'm taking you out. I was like, I will definitely party with you. <laughs> he, uh, he was cool, man, my type of guy. So, so what's going through your mind when you were in this fight and he, he started to exceed expectations? Or, I mean, I, I'm sure you've been in situations before, but what's going through your mind when that happens? Um, you know, it, it's the hard that makes the sport great. And, um, 
and I decided, you know, in the midst of a of a heated battle, to uh, to just continue to fly, you know, and and to earn every minute of victory um, by staying focused and uh, staying sharp and uh, and playing the game. It was great, man. It was it was a real chess match. It was like a chess match with someone that has twice the power. Where I had the reach advantage, he I think he had, had the clear power advantage, and uh, we made each other uh, great opponents. And people were booing, um, but man, if, if you are if you know anything about kickboxing, I think I think we put on a pretty decent level. And uh, did you have you seen Holly, or did you talk to her about what what, what did you say to her? You know, because I know you guys have a good relationship. Yeah, uh, she came up to me and she gave me a hug, and uh, and uh, I just told her that I told her that you know Holly, I said little girls should have uh, Barbie dolls of you. They should have posters of you on their wall because you're so courageous. You're so courageous. I mean, most people uh, don't want to fight the Ronda Rouseys of the world. Most people are are happy being a a gatekeeper or like a sea level fighter. You know, Holly, every time she steps up to the challenge against the meanest girl, the girl who's the killer, you know, and she does it uh, with grace and with a smile on her face. And, uh, you know, even the way it worked out tonight, I could see her wanting a rematch. She's just that type of person. Uh, she has big balls. She has big <laughs> balls. Um, and I'm so proud of her. I am so proud of her. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Tate. Hey, John, uh, right in front here. It, you fought the fight you wanted to fight, and you know how judges are notoriously inconsistent. Had the scores gone the other way, would you be angry at yourself for the way you fought? No, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been angry at myself. I would have. I would have felt like I could have done more. I would have been motivated and inspired to get back in there. And, and do more in a rematch. Uh, but it didn't go that way. You know, my, my coaches, uh, Greg Jackson, Mike Wingo, John, all the guys, uh, they've been around for a long time, especially Wink in the kickboxing department. And he was pretty sure that I won the fight. He, he, his energy, he wasn't worried. And that's why when uh, the judge was reading the final verdict, you know, um, I put my hands up way before they gave the, uh, the announcement because I trusted my coach's opinion. They said, John, you, you clearly won the fight. I haven't seen it yet, so I got to get back out there and, and watch it and, you know, criticize myself and see how I can get better. I wonder when he did hurt his uh, left leg in that sequence you referenced before, you seemed to notice it and you kind of went after him and he came after you with a, a combination. Did any of those land on you and, and bother you at all? Um, I think the, the best punch he landed was uh, early, or maybe the first round where he actually knocked my mouthpiece out. Um, outside of that, uh, I will have to watch the fight very closely, but I felt like I blocked uh, the majority of his, his punches. He, he showed a little bit of a weakness uh, in my defense with, with some of the leg kicks. But as far as my, my instincts, uh, when someone's throwing punches at me, I feel like you know they're not the most technical uh, you know, bobbing and weaving or what, but but I do make people miss. I'm, I'm curious about your lack of combinations. I mean, was it because he was so powerful? Like, you didn't throw a ton of combinations, it didn't seem like. Mm, Kevin. <laughs> um, uh, huh. What do you think you did? I, I felt like, uh, no, no, I didn't throw a lot of combinations. You're right. You're right. Um, I just felt like I played it smart. It was very humbling for me. I felt like I played it smart. At the end of the day, uh, I think it means a lot to my team that they have a champion. And, uh, and you're not gonna always look incredibly impressive, you know, especially against a warrior, mighty warrior like Tiago. So just the win, I'm super satisfied with, really. Yeah, I'm really excited about that win. And last thing for me, you know, I know you got to get healthy before you start thinking about what's next, but obviously there's a big fight next month. Would you fight the winner if they showed you the money? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, me and Daniel, we, we're, we're both speaking the same thing. It's, it's going to be a super fight, and the only, re the only reason why it hasn't happened is because of, I think, UFC scheduling. When the UFC is ready for the fight, uh, they know they have two guys who are willing and able, and they'll approach us, and they'll just say, hey, 
you know, this is what you guys are going to get paid, and, and I'm sure me and Daniel will be happy. And if Stipe were to win, would you uh, be willing to um, fight him as well? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be willing to fight Stipe as well. I would rather fight Daniel because I feel like I have his uh, recipe. Uh, but uh, but I fight Stipe too. But really, man, to be honest with you, Kevin, my, my real my passion is at the light heavyweight division. There's there's so many guys, there's so many guys that are coming up right now, and uh, so much work to be done still. You know, a lot of people always say, John, you've cleared a division. And I don't look at it that way. I mean, Jan, Johnny Walker, are you impressed with him? I'm impressed by, by all the fighters. I'm impressed by all the fighters. There's so many guys, man. I think with Johnny, you know, if I got to see him face a guy who was ranked top five in the world and he was able to do what he's been doing, I'd be a lot more impressed. Um, but, you know, I feel like if you gave me the level of competition he was fighting, you'd see some pretty impressive things, you know. So it's just hard to, it's hard to see how great this guy really is. When he's, when he's facing the level of competition he's facing. Congrats, thank you. Thank you, Kevin Ioli. You're welcome, John Jones. <laughs> My man. Hey, we've you know. come a long way, Kevin. <sighs> we've, had our, we've had our ups and downs. More downs than ups. More downs, for sure. You keep on creeping your way back into my life somehow. I don't know, I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> Hey, John. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, hey. You talk a lot about uh, Thiago's power. Yes. Did you get surprised about his power or anything in his game? No, I expected it. I expected it. And I think that's why the fight was so boring, you know. I, I didn't want to get caught with a big shot. And I, I played it smart. I played it smart. You know, people would have loved it if I would have been reaching out with jabs and crosses and, and getting into those exchanges. But not only does he hit hard, but he hits fast. And so... Uh, I'll go back to the drawing board, and, I, and I'll, I'll get better for sure. The, you know, especially I'm excited for our, our rematch when it happens. I want to see Tiago work his way back up the ladder, and uh, and I think he beats most most light heavyweights. So I know he'll be back. I don't know if it'll be in a year, or a year and a half, but when he does come back, you'll see a different strategy out of me for sure. What did you talk after the fight in the octagon? Oh, Tiago was just like, "Hey, man, when you come to Rio, let me take you out." And I was like, "Yeah." Let's do it. I can see him being a good time. So, so uh, I'm excited to. I love Brazil, man. I really do. People, people try to try to create this this dialogue of of oh, you've beaten so many Brazilians, you know, and it, and and I tell people all the time, I've beat way more Americans than I've beat Brazilians. Um, I really respect that country a lot. I mean, a lot of the greatest fighters have come from there. And uh, the people are just so loving and, and so welcoming to me. I think they respect me a lot. And uh, yeah, much love for Brazil. Do you want to fight in Brazil? I would love to fight in Brazil. I really would, but not against the Brazilian. I think they say something like, who, I'm a hey, yeah, I can't say it. It means you will die. <laughs> and I don't want to die. So, uh, so yeah, I'll fight anyone else uh, but a Brazilian in Brazil. Make it happen, guys. We just had Amanda here, and she considers herself as the best female fighter of all time. What do you think about that? And do you consider yourself as the greatest fighter of all time? I, I do, in fact, uh, think Amanda is the GOAT. Um, but at the same time, Holly Holm was so close to being the GOAT. I mean, if, if Holly would have won this fight tonight, I think she would have been unquestionably the greatest female fighter of all time. I mean, let's not forget she is a multiple-time world champion in boxing. And she's the only boxer to ever come to the UFC and win a world title. And if she would have been able to derail uh, Amanda Nunes, no one could argue with this girl being the greatest fighter of all time. That's why I think she should keep her head high because, I mean, this is a game of inches. And, uh, and she was inches away from being the best ever. So still the same person. Um, things just didn't go her way tonight. She needs to get back to the drawing board and, and do her thing. And as far as myself, I do look at myself as being one of the most dominant fighters in MMA history, um, especially considering the competition I've faced. Uh, but as far as greatness, you know, there's a lot of things about me that's not great. And so greatness will always be an opinion. And, uh, and I'm done trying to win over uh, people's opinions. I don't really care what people think about me. Um, but being dominant, that, that's something. I could be a real douchebag and be the most dominant. And that's something I'm striving for. But what is your opinion? Excuse me? 
I could be a real douchebag. So the internet's gonna be like, he already is a douchebag. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. But what is your opinion? Who You are the greatest fight of your time, in your opinion? I think I'm one of the most dominant, but I don't want to sit up here and toot my own horn. There's been a lot of guys that do a lot of great things. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Hey, John. Hello. Over here, dude. Hey, what up, dude? Full Reptile. All right. Good to see you. Congratulations tonight. Thank you, mate. Mate. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, obviously, you were flowing uh, a few super special moves out there. Were you inspired tonight by Jorge Masvidal's flying knee when you threw yours? Um, no, I've been working on flying knees. I've been working on that a lot. Uh, maybe somewhere subconsciously, him throwing one is why I went for one. But that's something we practice a lot. I thought the moment would be there, um, which it was. I'm not sure if it actually landed on him or not. I got to go back and watch it. Um, but, you know, with a little bit more belief, I, I probably would have caught him with it. Uh, but, yeah. Thanks a lot, man. That's it. That's it. Mm, easy, easy day. John. One question right Yes, here. sir. Uh, I spoke with you in, in L.A. at the media day, and I spoke with your coach, Greg Jackson, uh, at media day here, and you both used the phrase, uh, the unexpected becomes expected when preparing for Tiago Santos. After spending 25 minutes with him, did that statement uh, become true in, in your mind? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we expected some capoeira techniques, which is very unexpected for most people. Uh, but for us, because we've seen him so many times throughout training camp, I mean, he didn't come close to landing any type of spin attack. Um, they, they looked, I felt like we saw it coming from a mile away. And I think that's one of his greatest gifts is that unpredictability. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, he's not as unpredictable as people think. You just got to study a little bit more. And uh, yeah. Hi, John, congratulations on the win. Thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, first I wanted to ask you, um, Amanda Nunes at the LA Media Day was very open about how you two sharing a card has always been something she's looked forward to and uh, talked about how good of a relationship you two have. And obviously with your friendship with Holly Holm, did this uh, provide any um, awkward moments for you uh, being so close to both? Uh, well, I, I do have great respect for Amanda Nunes. I am a fan of greatness. You know, I'm not a big fan of teams, but I love great individuals. You know, I love Tom Brady, LeBron James, you know, you know, I love people, you know, Jordan, I love people, Anderson Silva. You know, a lot of people like to see great people fall. I don't. I'm really a big fan of greatness. Um, um, but there was no way, shape or form, was I rooting for Amanda tonight. You know, Holly is, is a very dear friend of mine's. I mean, she sold, she, she, she sold me my last house, you know what I mean? My, my daughters look up to her. She's friends with my fiance. Um, um, it was weird, yeah, because Amanda, she, she told me, she said, uh, you remember when uh, we were in New York and you had your belt in the air and I reached over and I touched your belt and I was just like, yeah, I remember. She was just like, I felt like you put like a lot of good energy on me and into me and, um, and, and I want to steal that energy again. And she like slapped my belt and I was like, hey, get a, get back. You're fighting my sister, you know? Um, um. Yeah, it was just weird, man. It was just weird. I really wanted Holly to do it. I do respect Amanda a lot. Um, and I'm honored to fight in the same era as her. Uh, but tonight was, was uh, it's not, it wasn't bittersweet. It was just bitter for me to watch my sister go down. All right, and last one from me. Just out of morbid curiosity, what was going through your mind when you did that, that jumping sidekick? Looked like you were aiming for uh, Tiago Santos's knee. Oh. Oh man, well, you know, my coach teaches, teaches us to be malicious. This is combat. And at the end of the day, uh, I mean, Tiago was trying to break my jaw tonight. He was trying to give me um, brain damage tonight. He was trying to, you know, he was trying to take some years off my brain. And so uh, this is a very malicious game. And if a guy can give you a stutter for the rest of your life or memory loss, I think an even trade off is to give him a lump for the rest of his life. That's just the game we play. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey John, uh, you're, uh, you've won in so many creative ways throughout your career. And uh, you come from a football family. And I wondered if uh, the influence of, of them, maybe you could say that in football, they say defense wins championships. Do you think you would sum up tonight uh, in that way? 
Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I think what worked against me is I, I've, I've been working with um, a coach, Frank, and, um, and he has he sacrificed his body over the course of this over the course of this camp. Shout out to you, Frank Lester. Um, and he comes and he, he, he spars with me um, every practice. And I've, I feel like he's helped me on my defense tremendously. And my gift back to him is not to counter him with strikes or punch him in the face um, because he's such a good partner. Uh, you know, just blocking his shots is, makes me happy enough. And tonight, I found myself out there playing this game that I've been doing all camp, which is just making sure I'm not getting hit. And uh, instead of countering back right away or going to the offense. So it was a lesson learned for me. I need to uh, not only be sure to be just out of reach of punches and strikes, um, but I need to be retaliating. I got to get back to punching my teammates in the face. So, uh, so yeah, defense did win a championship tonight. And, uh, and some good offense, too, though. I appreciate it. Thank you, and congratulations again. Man, you got a great voice for radio. I'll have to get into it someday. Yeah, listen to you. I appreciate it. Kind of like a Howard Stern sound. You think? I don't know. Well, I, can't, I can't put my finger on it. All right. Well, you can come on the show, and then you can uh, do an, we'll do a little uh, expose on that. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll do a little Howard Cosell. Hello, everyone, Howard Cosell. There you go. See? John Bones Jones. Hey, you know you got the gift. Use that thing. <laughs> Definitely not a face for TV. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sitcom. Sitcom. Hey, John. Uh, Algerman Santos, Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, you mentioned that you knew um, of uh, Tiago's um, skill being a black belt in Muay Thai. Um, was it your original game plan to stick to standing up, or were you uh, tempted to take him down at any point in the, in the game? You know, honestly, man, I think I think my pride was a little intact. I felt like if I were to be the one to shoot, that would mean he was winning in the kick, kickboxing department. I think I could be honest enough to say that. I think my pride was intact. It was a very challenging match on the feet. Um, and I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of having to take him down. And so I stood there, and, uh, and I stayed ultra-focused for 25 minutes straight to avoid those powerful shots and, um, and land my own. And, uh, and I won at where he's strong. I'm not too worried about a rematch um, because I know there's a whole different can of worms I could have opened and they were never opened. I don't think I even attempted to shoot on him. Um, and I'm curious what will happen when I do shoot on him the next time. Is that going to be something like your your MO uh, for future fights? Maybe that whatever strength your your opponent uh, has is that what you're going to study and and focus on doing? As yeah, I, part I feel of like a challenge for you. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I've been doing that for a long time. Just trying to fight the guys that wear their best. I'm here for it to be hard. You know, I, I I want good challenges, and every time I go through crazy battles, I learn a lot about myself. I learn where I'm weak. I learn where I need to improve. Tonight, I'm I'm going to watch this fight probably eight times, and I want to I want to figure out how other light heavyweights are looking at me right now, uh, and I'll, I'm going to be my own biggest critic, and um, and I'm going to try to be better. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Man, I know some people brought tickets to my after party. I think I may uh, go do that. Maybe we can do two more questions. Anybody have any good ones? John, quickly, you, you, over here, you talked about sticking to your game plan. You heard the crowd booing. Was there any point you were tempted to deviate from that game plan and say, okay, I'm going to get more aggressive because I hear what the fans are saying? No, no. It, it doesn't feel good to be booed, um, but not many people know what it feels like to be in there. Not many people know what it feels like to be in there, and I can't allow them to, uh, to make decisions for me. It would be disrespectful to my coaches, be disrespectful to my gift, to myself. Um, no way. I feel like that's a very rookie move to start switching up your strategy because someone's booing you. Jones. Uh, mm -hmm. December, March, and now July. How do you feel fighting so often? And do you still want to fight one more this year? Yes, sir. My, my goal is to fight uh, in December. And I'm just going to go to the drawing board. Shout out to Chandler Jones, one of the greatest uh, defensive ends in the NFL right now. 
I love him so much. Oh, it's okay to clap for him. He's a nice guy. He won't bite you. Ugly joker, that's for sure. Twins? No, 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 no. I'm definitely cuter. <laughs> I love him so much. Um, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, you, you were saying that you still want to fight in December. This yes. Year. Uh -huh. So how do you feel fighting so often since the last years you couldn't? It feels good. It feels good. I need to talk to my coaches about uh, just getting, making sure that I stay fired up. Tonight I was just so relaxed. I was talking and laughing and dancing and and I wasn't scared to come out here and work. And that could be a bad thing. You know, you got to be you got to be terrified a little bit to be sharp. And I, I just felt so comfortable. You know, that was working against me tonight. I had no sense of urgency to, to overdo anything. I was just out there cruising and winning the rounds. And, and that's not cool. People want to see me go out there and finish people and, 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 and go hard. And so I think my, my comfort and familiarity with the octagon kind of worked against me tonight. And so I am willing to fight in December. I want to fight in December, but I got to make sure the fire is like well lit, if that makes sense. Yeah, my, my, my last question, John. Uh, so after December and March, now we didn't hear anything about that picogram, picogram, or whatever it is. So is it a done deal forever? I hope so. Hey, guys. God bless you. Get home safe. You're in Vegas. Have a little fun. And uh, man, I love you guys. Love the fans that are listening. I love you guys so much. Thank you for the support. It means everything. You are my motivation. And God is good. Jesus is number one. <laughs>